All right, so in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Denon X4500. Um, now, if you're new to the channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button. It really makes all the difference to me. Uh, you know, the more subscribers I have, the more products I'm able to review. And, and you know, for a long time, I talked about how much I like Denon Marantz. And, you know, once I hit around 10,000 subscribers, um, you know, I was able to get a hold of someone and they started sending out gear and things like that. I already re reviewed the uh, Marantz uh, 7012. And so this is the next product I'm reviewing as a result. Um, but yeah, and, and by the way, it's not just that. Uh, you can check out my Base Hack series. Uh, it's basically, the Base Hack series is all about uh, just basically tips and tricks I do on my own setup that makes it sound better. And it's not, that's not something I'm compensated for or anything like that. It's just something I do for my viewers to help you get a better experience. And so definitely check out the Base Hack series and, and please subscribe because again, it really makes a big difference. Um, but yeah, so, so Denon sent out this X4500 and uh, I'm really happy about it. I'm excited about it because it's a new audio format and that new audio format is uh, IMAX, okay, you get IMAX enhanced with it. Um, but I'm not going to go into all the particular specs of, of the X4500. Um, I'll, I'll say that it has XT32, which is something I'm a big fan of. That's the Odyssey room correction. Uh, it, it's a good system. I like it. I like the way it works. Uh, there, there is no room correction I'm aware of that would set everything the way I set it up. Uh, one of the my more popular videos is the uh, how I set up my X6200, and in that I go over all the changes I make after room correction. But XT32 is a really good room correction. I definitely prefer it over the basic uh, Odyssey that comes with some of the lower tier units. Um, but you know the other important thing about the uh, X4500 is it is a 9.2 channel system, so it's really good if you're wanting to do. Uh, you know, the, the height surrounds. So, you know, your Dolby Atmos, your DTSX, uh, and RO3D, and now IMAX Enhanced, which is a version of DTSX. Um, and with external amplification, see, I'm running an external amplifier with this right now, it, that external amplification allows me to run 11 channels if I want to. Uh, so it's, it's a good setup. This is a really, really good workhorse of an AVR. Um, I really like it. I like it so much, in fact, that I believe it's going to be what powers the RV setup, um, primarily because I want to be able to say the RV is an IMAX theater on wheels. Um, it's at least an IMAX enhanced. So it's really cool because everyone knows that in the realm of commercial theaters, IMAX is like the gold standard. You go to a regular theater at your local mall that's non-IMAX. And then you go to a, an actual full IMAX theater because there is a difference. Um, there's IMAX light and then there's full IMAX. Um, the full IMAX theaters are, are really impressive. And so, you know, and, and basically what I'm talking about is the audio portion. I haven't gone as far as the video portion. I haven't gotten an IMAX enhanced TV or anything like that. Um, but the, the audio is something that I like. And, you know, there's not a whole lot out there right now for titles that are in IMAX. Uh, there's two. There's um, one I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. But it's the I think it's a South Pacific movie. And then the other one is A Beautiful Planet. And this one stands out to me. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. One of the things about the IMAX enhanced uh, format, okay, the way I've seen it explained and, the, and it makes sense to me is that when you go to an IMAX theater, a legit true lime, IMAX theater, and you hear the audio in there, it's mixed specifically for that theater. And then when that movie, even though it was shot in IMAX, when it gets transferred to, you know, DTSX or maybe Atmos or whatever it's going to go to, that IMAX, you know, mix that's meant for the actual theater itself just kind of stays on the shelf. It's only meant for the theaters. And the idea is that the IMAX enhanced is mixes that are actually meant for the theater it, that is transferred over to the disc so that you can actually hear the IMAX enhanced sound in your house. And, you know, wh so what's the point? What's the big deal with that? Well, what I'll say is having listening to this movie in particular, okay, um, you know, the, the, the South Pacific one was, was good. I'm not like, I don't hate it or anything, but 
this really demonstrated a few things that stood out to me. And it's something I've been trying to articulate and I've been meaning to do a video on it. But when it comes to elevated sound, when it comes to, you know, 3D sound, when it comes to immersive sound like your Atmos and, and, and things like that, I think a lot of times people who are mixing these movies kind of miss the boat because the, the height channels aren't emphasized. They're not utilized as much as I think they could or... On the flip side, they're overutilized to where it's it's so much coming at you that you can't really pick it out, okay? Now, this is getting real picky on my part, okay? And, I, and admittedly so. But there are certain things that I really appreciate when I was watching this movie because um, there, were, there were parts in it, particularly the spacewalk, where they're in this suit and they're, wa- and they're floating through space. They're bumping into things. And it really sounds like you're in that suit bumping into things because you're hearing something up here and then over there. And, and, and it's, it's isolated. So it really sounds like it's just a sound coming from over there rather than just this whole uh, overwhelming everything of sound coming at you. It's more by, by doing those little isolated sounds here and there, it makes the experience more exciting, more like you're there. It, it's more useful to the format by making it less coming at you and just more identifiable sounds coming from, you know, just over your head to the left and, and just over your head to the right and, and to the side, you know. These little sounds, when they take the time to do that, instead of just, you know, throwing all this sound at you, these little, you know, tidbits of sound here and there when it's quiet and you you can make it out and it's easily discernible. I think that is a better use of the whole 3D immersive, you know, IMAX, uh, Atmos, DTSX format. I think that's really good and I really like that. Um, So, and and, and, and during this whole movie, the just the the height speakers were just more active. It was just more like you heard uh, Jennifer Lawrence. She was coming through the main speaker because she was the narrator. But then when people were, you know, talking about things, it was coming from all four height speakers. Like it was, it was as though they were speaking from above you. And it was an, it was a neat effect. Um, some people may not like it and they may be like, well, it was too much or whatever. But I really like, I was like, wow, okay, this is definitely, this sounds like I'm in an IMAX theater. And so, you know, the question is, how many titles are going to be IMAX? Um, how many, uh, you know, are there going to be that same type of mix that I'm liking that I'm hearing from this, you know, beautiful planet uh, Blu-ray? I don't know. Um, I can't tell the future. I, I don't know. And so, uh, but but really, that's the, like the big news for the X4500. Um, also, the X6500, uh, that's, you know, basically uh, more channels, you know, a little bit more wattage. Um and things like that, but it, you would get the the 6500 over the six or the 4500 because you want to run more channels. Okay, that's basically that's why I would go from the 4500 to the 6500. But so so say you got you you've got an X4300. Um, would you want to upgrade to the X4500? I'm not necessarily sure because the biggest thing you're getting there, you know, you're, you're getting some, uh, some upgrades here and there, but the big difference is the IMAX format. Okay. Um, so is that IMAX format, you know, worth, you know, doing a lateral upgrade going from the same model, just the upgraded version. I don't know. By the way, for those of you new to the channel, I was bear that just walked by. (laughs) Um, but you know, so I'm not sure if that makes as much sense now if you're if you're at like a, a 2200 or you know one of the lower uh, units a 3200 or something like that and you're upgrading anyway um one of the things i look at for value is like oh you can get last year's model at a, at a big discount so you know an x4400 you can get pretty inexpensively compared to the uh, x4500 um if you're making the upgrade at this point what i'm hearing I myself would probably go with that 4500, even though the 4400 is probably cheaper. Um, just because you, you've got the IMAX enhanced, and y- hey, maybe it, maybe the IMAX enhanced will be a dud, right? That's possible. I don't think so, but it's possible. Um, 
But I think it's going to be a pretty good format. And I think it's worth having because, you know, in, in a, a year or two when more titles come out and things like that, you may be thinking, man, I wish I would have gotten that. So to me, it, it seems like a, a good option. And, and Denon and Morantz are really good about upgrading to the newer formats. They're usually the most up-to-date uh, AVRs that you can get, um, typically. Okay, um, they're they're usually on the cutting edge, so that's one of the reasons I like them. I also like them because they do a really good job of the base, um, which is really important. Obviously, I made a whole channel about it, um, and and if you're like totally new to the channel, the whole point of the channel is finding really deep sounding bass that is powerful and not something you have to struggle to hear. When it hits those low notes, it's obvious and it's powerful and it's meaningful. Um, and that's unlike most subs that are out there. So uh, if you're looking at subwoofers, if you're wondering, check out the list. Um, and I'll put a link to that down below too. Um, it, it really does, I go into a lot of detail on why I would pick these particular subs and, and why I think you should go duels and all that. But um, but anyway, yeah, I. I really like this x4500 um, it, it's really it, it it just works it does a, a good job now you know again i if you get any piece of equipment and you plug it in and you just set it up and, and just go um you're not going to be getting the most out of it even if you run room correction you're not going to get the most out of it um it's really going in and doing the adjustments afterwards uh to to put your own flavor on things that really gives you the best response and one of the reasons I, you know, I was so excited that Denon uh, and Marantz were talking to me is because I already use their products. I, I'm already a fan, and a lot of my bass hacks are based around the Denon product. Um, I'm very familiar with their menus. I'm, you know, people will tell me, oh, I'm, I'm having this problem, that problem. I can usually just, there it is, you know, just go in and adjust that, and boom, they're done. Um, and so, you know, the and, and to go back to the bass hack series as well, you know, part of my enjoyment on this, I, I just did a video recently called the speaker level hack. When you, again, when you set it up and you run room correction, and this is not the fault of Odyssey, this is not the fault of any room correction, um, but they set the speaker levels to a certain level. Well, in the RV project, some speakers are way too close and other speakers are way too far away. And anyway, you, you can go see that in the speaker level hack, but essentially I modify the speaker levels and it really improves the whole cohesiveness and the balance uh, of the sound. So, you know, check that out too. But yeah, this is one of those amplifiers that uh, I can blindly recommend. Um, unless you're wanting more channels, then I could blindly recommend the X6500 um, or the 8500. Those are like, you, you, it's, you're not going to go wrong. They're going to do a good job. They're going to give you that sound you want. And if you want to know how to get the most out of them, check out the Bass Hack series. Um, it's, it's something I get a lot of feedback. People tell me, hey, this is really my whole home setup. It sounds a lot better. And it's from watching your videos. And, and that kind of response is wonderful to me, and I really appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, I, so with this X4500, I can give a, a blanket blind recommendation to it because it's just good it's a good workhorse it processes all the important formats it you know it just does a good job um and so it's it, like i said it's probably going to be what's going to be in the rv so that when i take it out and show it to people that's the experience i want them to be able to have and so that's i think that's a testament of some value uh as far as that's what i'm picking um now you know, who knows? Maybe there's a, another amplifier that comes along that surpasses that or that I think belongs better. I, I don't know. But at this point, the X4500 really does what I want it to do. So anyway, that's my review of the X4500 and some of my thoughts on the IMAX format. And I think they kind of go hand in hand because, you know, that's that's the biggest news of going from the 4400 to the 4500. So um yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, if you think I'm wrong about something or you have questions, let me know. Uh, you know, my, my audience, the questions you have and the feedback I get from you really does shape the content. And what I want to know from you is what works, what doesn't. And, you know, like I want to know what's the favorite bass hack out there because you know, I tend to think the distance hack is really... Uh, a, a really good one and an important one um, but like the level hack and things like that the crossover hack those were all 
they all really change the way the system sounds and it really gives you a, a lot more for your experience. So um, anyway, I'm rambling, but thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned. I've got some more stuff coming up and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So thanks so much for watching.